Well, you crack on, and I'll open another bottle of British fortified wine. Oh yes. So what? What, uh, what brand is it? This same week. as same as last week, um, Sainsbury's Stanford Cream. Despite the fact that it gave me a twenty-four hour hangover last time, that's uh, and that's Too only for this shit. That's only three hours more than the listeners of the last show got. Right. You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension. A dimension of sound. A dimension of sight. A dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas you've just crossed over into. We are Lala Cost. Good, it's good, good. The Voice of Sex coming to you live and direct on Network 23 from America. That's Are right. Are you doing like a <laughs> realistic satellite delay there? That's, that's, do you know that's exactly what I was doing? You're in the United States of America. America. You really I'm are. In America. In America. How are you finding America? And it's not the first time you've been, or is it? No, it's not. But I am terrified that as soon as I get back to England, I'm going to get beaten up because I'll start saying hello to people and talking to people in the street in a friendly manner. Because you're fucking allowed to do that here. Howdy ho, neighborino. Howdy diddly, Dalek sex. Hide, isn't it hide diddly ho, he says. I, I have no idea. Hide diddly ho, neighborino. Yeah, and just, yes. you just get a, you just get a thousand yard stare from anyone in this country. Mm. So, so typically, um, you're over there with, <clears throat> yeah, with an agenda, but we don't care about your agenda. All we care about is what, 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 what crushingly disappointing snacks you've, you've come across in the last 48 hours. Find out next week in our crushingly disappointing Snacks America special. Ah, oh, there you are, Maureen, my love. Did you get the shopping all right? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I thought you were my wife for a minute. <laughs> Do I look like your wife, then? No, no, I'm not married. He needs to fuck her. He needs to fuck her before the show. <laughs> fuck her before the show, and she won't. You won't hear a peep out of her for for 24 hours. It'd be like, yeah, she's cool. She's just there on her mobile phone in bed, just chilling. You know, but she won't be there, just uh, screaming for attention. Oh, by the way, remember me? Remember I'm still here? Oh, you're talking amongst yourselves. Oh, fuck you guys. I'm gonna download <laughs> Tropico Four. <laughs> That's girls for you though. You've got to manage them, haven't you? You've got to manage them. I'm gonna lick. A, I'm just gonna lick up square batteries for smoke detectors that you don't use for anything but smoke detectors or remote control cars. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm gonna lick it now while we're on the radio. We're not on the radio. It's I am, just... and I'm twiddling the knob. <laughs> Next Xbox to be called Xbox Infinity. Did that make the show? Yep. 
Good Do you know, actually, I, there's, um, in August 2012, I wrote a piece for the Lollicourse that said, uh, poking the Xbox rumours with a stick. And in there, I discussed the fact that it would likely be called the Xbox Infinity, wow. based on turning the Windows 8 logo on its side, and it's hit the cool nature, and everything else. And uh, after that, everybody seemed to just shut up and forget about it until now, and everybody's like, oh, we think it's going to be called Infinity. <laughs> yeah? Like, I was talking about this last year. Yeah, guys? Oh, I was go. calling this... I, I burnt my tongue. Because I said the words Xbox Infinity before it was cool. And they were like, what? And I go, don't worry about it. You probably won't even understand. Uh, 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 uh. Early at a day I was getting down to a little known London radio station called Imagine Radio. I was indeed enjoying DJ's Cold Harbour Ray and Skipper, so I sent a text bot to them. As a hardcore fan, they gave me and Dr. Hancock a big shout out. They also gave the Lollacost a big shout out but fucked it up, and called it Lollalist. The guy can't fucking read. What a cunt. Send out to my sexy crew as well. Yes news, yes bot. Send out to Doctor. <laughs> yes low last crew, Shepherd's Bosch. Mids Radio. Outside bot. What a complete stinking shower of anal pebbles. Good night. We, I've got a new section, uh, which I'm, I'm hoping will become my favourite section on the show. Hey. Now, on Podtoid, they do this section called uh, Text from Trent in which Jim Sterling pretends that he is being stalked via SMS text message by 90s pop legend Trent Reznor from the Nine Inch Nails. I think we can go one better than that on the Lollacourse, Dr. Hamhock. I don't know about you. Oh, well... I say anything Destructoid can do, we can do better. There's always room for you to push forward this podcast and then for me to hold it back. So let's crack on, crack off together. This section is called Cliffy Tweets. And we're going to be reading real tweets from Cliff Blazinski. Dalek, who's uh, who's Cliff Berlin, 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 Berlinski? For the people who might not know. Cliffy B is the maker of Gears of War, who you may know resigned last year and now seems to be exhibiting the downward mental spiral of a man trying to cope with not being relevant to anything anymore. <laughs> Here's the first one of his tweets I have for you this month. Birthday cake, and then a mathematical greater than sign, urinal cake. I would say he's shuddering in a gutter in a pool of his own vomit, shouting mummy. I don't know, I'd put it lower than that. I mean, he's obviously tried the urinal cake, (laughs) and there was birthday cake in his mind while he was doing it. He can't handle this. No more showbiz parties. Like, no cake for Cliffy! (laughs) So he's, he's just popped one in his mouth there. Mm. Well, they are bite size. Um, he's, there's a link with this one. It's it's a shortened link to a picture of a man with a cat on his head. And he posts, he tweets, More like the cat on the hat. Capital letters. Am I right? Hey, darling. Yeah. What do you call a guy with a cat on his head? Go on. Warren. What? That's not right, is it? Why is this a turn-on to watch my wife explain to tourists on Bourbon Street how to eat crawfish? Ah, an insight into the uh, slowly melting mind. I, I, I don't even know how to... I, I, I'm, I don't know about you, I'm out there. I have nothing funny to say about that. I don't even know how to start. What do you call a guy with a crawfish on his head? Go on. Warren. What? That's not right, is it? I love that one of the solutions for a crying baby is to jam a cork in the kid's pie hole, full stop, brackets, 
pacifiers. Yeah, he's never he's never sucked a tit, has he? I I know <laughs> the logic train, the failure of the logic train. In that joke, is genuinely impressive. Brackets breastfeeding, and the brackets make it lovely because it's like, here's my <laughs> joke, and like here's the little qualifier <laughs> that explains the joke on the side. It's sort of like a a, a jokey bento box. It's in compartments. It's just weird. It's almost it's like it's just the... weird. <laughs> it's just weird. <laughs> okay, okay. That's coming from me. Hit here's... me with another one. I'm I'm getting into this. I'm getting into yeah, this. So am I. Here's one. I, for one, cannot wait for the hack and slash backlash. Sack, back and crack. Wax pack. Dr. Hawk's patented hot pot stock stackable back sack and crack. Wax packs. There are two possibilities here. One, this has to do with his often touted opinion that first person shooters get too much of a rough ride in the press. On the other hand, I like to think that I cannot wait for the hack and slash backlash is actually an attempt at a tearful confession, a warning of what he is what he is planning. Are you not just thinking that he was trying to be a smart ass with wordplay? There weren't enough characters in Twitter to type. I can't wait for the rooting tooting first person shooting. No, I'm not giving him that much credit. Hooting. <laughs> hey! You see, you've got the silverware. You're like coming at me, like dual. I'm coming wi- at you like Cleopatra. You, you dual wielding, like hey, yeah, 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 like the guy from Indiana Jones. Indiana just sh- coming at you. <laughs> I'm coming at you like Cleopatra 2025. This is the news. Recently, a former ship's captain held hostage by Somali pirates got a red-faced welcome from fancy dress pirates at a Devon Women's Institute. They thought that Colin Dutch was going to be speaking to them about piracy, not realizing he was held hostage for 47 days in 2008. Parkham is a small village, but it has a thriving women's institute. So when members heard there was going to be a lecture about pirates, they decided to dress up. I'm in disguise now. So I had a red striped uh, top. I had a bandana. Just something different to do. <laughs> a bit of fun. A bit you of fun, know. yes. I had a bandana. So they turned up with their plastic cutlasses and cuddly parrots. I had a bandana. Expecting a talk about pirates off the North Devon coast. But their rather bemused guest speaker had a very different story to tell. I had a bandana. Captain Colin Darch was captured by real pirates off the coast of Somalia five years ago and spent 50 terrifying days at gunpoint as a hostage. Humiliation. So when you realised that Captain Darch had been held by Somali pirates and that's why he was coming to talk to you. I was a tad embarrassed, (laughs) to say the least. I had a bandana. (laughs) And what did he think, confronted by 20 ladies dressed as Long John Silver? I don't have time for this bullshit. Holocaust Literary Masterclass presents Until the End of Time, a historical fan fiction by Gopher Chan. It was another boring day in the secret annex. Anne Frank sat on the bed of her room, writing in her diary. It never occurred to her, however, that this entry would be her last. As she wrote in the quiet attic, there was a noise from downstairs. Her heart jumped with both fear and excitement. Was it them? the Nazis. She had no idea whether to run downstairs or hide. The decision, however, was made for her. Her door flew open and a tall soldier was visible in the doorway, glaring. The cries of her family members and friends were turned out as Anne only thought of one thing. She stood up and followed the soldier out of the room, down the stairs and into the back of the truck. So this is it, she said quietly to herself. All those years of hiding for naught. 
Then Anne realised she had left her precious diary up in her room. She broke loose from the officer and made a dash back to the shop when he removed a gun from his holster and fired a shot in her direction. Anne fell to the floor, feeling searing pain run through her leg where the bullet had met its mark. The Gestapo officer laughed menacingly and moved towards her, grinning. Suddenly there was a blinding flash of light. A huge cloud of smoke appeared next to Anne blocking her from the soldier's vision. And when the smoke cleared, he was in for quite a surprise. There was Son Goku holding Anne in his arms, standing next to a huge metal capsule. Goku, cried Anne, you came back for me. The Gestapo officer turned and ran, but Goku was too quick. After laying Anne on the concrete, he dashed towards the Nazi and knocked him to the ground unconscious with one blow. Nazi scum, muttered Goku as he spat on his enemy's limp body, then returned to Anne. Come on, commanded Goku. We've got some Nazi ass to kick. Anne jumped on the mysterious Cyan's back, and they flew off into the sky. Welcome to this section of the show called Name a Tune of Retro, where we have tampered with retro game tunes. Can you guess them all? Answers at the end of the show. Good luck. Hello fans, it's Dr. Hamhock here. Let's, Let's name, name a tune, a tune of, of retros. retros. I love a retros. Can you guess what it is? Name that tune. Name that tune. Name that tune. If the show we get down on the lost is not Name that tune. Name that tune. Name that tune. Name that tune. Guess them all. Answers at the end of the show. Good luck. Was going to have to decide between doing sex talks about apps and asking you what you've been playing this week. But thankfully we can do both at the same time because we've both been playing the same game, which is an iOS app, all week pretty much, haven't we? Uh, that's true. Sex talks about apps. Uh huh. Someone kept bugging me. What would have been two months ago, if not more, three months ago. Uh, every so often, I get a little message on Skype saying, "Get Clash of Clans." <laughs> There's, there's two people here who have been on the game for a, a different time period. So this should be an interesting chat. Well, let me start off by saying that Dr. Hawk and I are now in the same clan on Clash of Clans. And yeah, boy! High five! And 
I don't know about you, maybe I'm a bit older than the last time I was in a clan, but it feels a little bit weird. Because, you know, it, it's, a common, it's a common problem for us older gamers, us old fags, us who are all so old school that they've told, that they've down um, where you go on a, a game, you join a group, a clan, uh, whatever, a guild, whatever you call them, and everyone on there but you is a 13-year-old boy. And before, it was just sort of like an annoyance that comes with gaming. Now that I'm getting on for middle age, it really does, it's starting to feel a bit creepy. It's... Every, every single time <laughs> I donate troops to our clan's war efforts... It feels a bit like I'm grooming. I feel a li- I feel a bit talky. You can be in a clan and you help one another by donating uh, assets and resources. And there's a little built-in chat box, which is fantastic. It's wonderful. Great, straightforward, simple idea. And it works works beautifully. But I feel a little bit formal. And I do feel... <laughs> yeah, I feel a little bit like... I'll type something and say, Hey, thanks for the troops. And in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, Does that sound a little bit like, Hey, thanks for the troops... Can I bum you? So I end up putting another kind of comment after saying, yeah, lol. Yeah, did you see Wayne Rooney, lol? Yo, the bitches. I'm cool, yo. Stop asking how old I am. Don't make me reveal the truth. (laughs) Reveal, yeah. Just distract them with something that they like to talk about, like the dub steps or the Harlem shakes. There was, um, to test the water before I went into Dalek's clan. Um, I went into a different, I was in a different clan. It was obviously run by, um, the, some kid's dad. And their uncle, because they would keep asking the clan leader for permission over and above what you would expect of a clan leader. Like, um, can I play, can I play this game tonight? And I'll have to ask my dad if, if you could be promoted or I, are you, what was it like? There'd be conversations like, Hey, do you know this person? Is that person your uncle? Is he in the clan? And I'm there reading it, not quite knowing how to interact. I can interact with my niece, who's a, He's an eight-year-old. That's fine. And it's not creepy or anything. It's, you know, it's fine and dandy. But I'm trying to crack on with the game here and I'm just a bit confused as to having, having a base conversation. I want a little bit of banter as well. And it's very mm. difficult to strike up a bit of banter with someone who, who's only, only recently started um, wiping their ass without their dad's help. Did you ever see the uh, Penny Arcade? Back to... This is why people <laughs> like us just should not have children. Got a box set to get through first, bitch. I'll watch that with a screaming baby. Well, the app is... Um, it reminds me most of Zombie Cafe in that it's got the basic gameplay hook, world-building, village-building game in the style of, you know, uh, Smurf Village, Cafe World, what have you. It's built on an infrastructure of player versus player, but very simple skirmish-based player versus player, so that each fight lasts two to three minutes clash of clans is a little bit more more large-scale rts it's you can have up to about 220 troops plus 25 that you can have donated by your clan so it's about 250 aside battles at the top end and a time limit of three lim- of um three minutes on the battle the only thing you can choose in the battle is where the troop is deployed once they're down they will follow their own ai script beyond that the only way in which you can actually affect the battle is to drop spells offensive spells support spells or healing spells onto the battlefield it's not rts in the sense of command and conquer starcraft it resembles more one of those fights in the beano which is a big cloud of dust with like fists and feet and speech bubbles that say, take that, Biff, ooh, yeah, coming out of the side. I, I'm loving it, absolutely loving it, and I've made a little donation to the to the game, because I've, I've played yeah. it quite a bit there. I've put uh, about 20 quid into it so far, and I've played it probably about five times longer than I have any of the AAA games on my shelf. So, you know, I consider that good value. The um, I, I see the game sl- in a slightly more simplified way, probably because I'm not very far into it in that it's more of a passive tower defense game, whereby, as you said, you set up your resources, you set up your weaponry and your re- your um, defense in a in a in a pattern on a f- on a flat open area of ground to invite people in to attack you pretty much so you have re- resources that you're protecting little banks of elixir and gold that you've used to 
spend in game. And people of your sort of of your level in the game randomly will come in and, and attack you. So you set your resources up, but once when they do come and attack you, you can't change the, the the defense you can't change these resources that you've got so you try to set up set them up in a bit of a mathematical way trying to guide the players who are attacking you into a path where you where your at your fixed assets can attack them when you're attacking randomly attacking uh, an equal leveled player their assets their resources are fixed the layout is will be designed however they want it to be designed and you will place your attackers in a in in positions on the board where you feel you can exploit weaknesses but in the main it's absolutely passive it's more about building and growing a a, a citadel and 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 walls and resources and upgrading them and trying to pit your 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 fixed strategy against other people's passive attack and i mm. really really like that i really like the fact that you can play at any pace you like mm. well the genius of clash of clans is that it works on a hell of a lot of different levels as you said <clears throat> you can leave the player versus player element completely you can just make your base you can get attacked and then this is a really clever element once you've been attacked it will save a video of what happened and you can go over your videos over and over trying to fix the holes in your defense so it is totally okay to play the game like that you can play it as a proper player versus player rts you can play it as a management game where you look at each person's village and think how do i drop troops onto this in a way that will end up in a profit for me or in well, the what i'm doing at the moment is i'm playing it as a heist game like monaco uh you keep going around people's villages until you find somebody who's left an obvious hole in their defenses you smash a hole in the side you get in strip it bare and get out and screw the amount of trophies that you lose <laughs> Sex talks about apps. Uh huh. Right, let me just have a swig of Stella to settle my guts. I've got a little um, letter here from the Reddish Appetizer. Have um, let's, let's, let's have it then. Let's be having your young Dr. Hot. Someone wrote into the Reddish and Ulster Advertiser saying, Rats have a right to live as well <laughs> as the time. Apparently, and it starts. Recent reports of rat infestation at the Arrow Valley Park, which is like a big park in Redditch with a big lake. It's a big man-made thing because they built a load of houses on farmland, mm. so there's nowhere for the water to go, so that to <laughs> irrigate the whole thing, and so, so the water ran somewhere. You know, these new builds are like. Recent reports of rat infestation at Arrow Valley Park. Don't surprise me at all. I spotted rats down there as long ago as two years while fishing, and I've seen them quite often while walking around the lake, but I didn't report it to anyone, as I have a different opinion to most. Rats, as you know, are wildlife. Yeah, those beautiful, beautiful creatures. Rats, as you know, are wildlife, and in my opinion, have as much right to live as any other creature on Earth, including us. And I can't see why, why human life can't accept that. <laughs> Apart from the fact they spread pestilence and disease in the Arrow Valley Park. If these rats were guinea pigs or hamsters, you'd all be stroking them and tickling their tummies <laughs> and getting bubonic plague. Mm. So leave them alone. Leave them alone, unless they are looking shy but coyly available. With a strategically placed hole. So leave them alone. As long as they don't enter your home, they're not really going to do anything wrong. They're just trying to survive the best they can. A bit like us humans, really. By the way... <laughs> by the way, you can buy live rats in pet stores nowadays to keep in your homes. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't they to feed to the snakes? Snake, are you okay? Snake? Snake? Ah, uh, you're thinking of baby mice. Like, the like... thing is, the thing about... <clears throat> It's sort of like saying that you can buy rats in a pet shop, therefore all rats are nice. It's a bit like saying you can buy dogs in a pet shop, therefore wolves aren't going to hurt you. You could turn them over and tickle their belly because they've got fur, mm. just like a I've hamster. Got, I've got a cat at home. It, it, it likes having its belly scratched. So, you know, go and hug a bobcat. 
<laughs> go and snuggle a lynx. No, it's not the same. These are domesticated animals bred for their docility so that you can keep them as pets. There are plenty of big rats in London. You don't tend to see them, but the only ones I've seen have been during the day, walk, walk, running down the road during the day. And there's a dead there's a dead one outside my uh, then flat. And the fucker was as big as my foot, which is a size 11 foot. And the f- it was a fucking huge... It was a monster. It was terrifying. I didn't really want to turn it over and tickle its tummy at that point. What bugs me about the letter, which you may not have picked up on, is that you've got... Uh, there's a gentleman campaigning for the rights of um, an animal that spreads disease, pestilence, um, killing many millions of people throughout history, who's sitting on the bank of a lake with a bit of string and a massive sharp hook, throwing it in, pulling the faces out of fish, and not giving two shits about that. But he likes the rats, which is nice. Do you ever hear what Mitch Hedberg said, said about fishermen? He said he didn't mind fishermen, but he, he really hated sports fishermen, because sp- the, the guys that throw the fish back. Because he said they don't, they, don't, they don't want to eat the fish, they just want to make it late for something. Yeah, fuckers. Snake! Right, it's well, time for the part of the show called Two Girls... I forgot what it's called. <laughs> hey, da- hey, hey, Dalek, isn't it about... This time of, in the show that we uh, do the feature called Two Girls, One Hawk. Always fucked it Is up. Is that what it's even called? <laughs> yeah. It's what you called it, fuck's sake. I say. can't remember. <laughs> Two Girls, I've One Hawk. a complete hawk. brain outage. <laughs> what an excellent day for an exorcism. You'd like that? Intensely. It would bring us together. It's time for the part of the show called Two Girls, One Hawk, where I read out horrible, horrible things for the internet in an attempt to make Dr. Hamhock break his Mac or whatever Ponzi hips thing he uses. It's, um, it's Adele. <laughs> okay, to I've make all... Dr. <laughs> it's ironic. It's <laughs> ironic because I'm actually recording this on a MacBook right now. So, yeah, where I attempt to make Dr. Hamhock break his Dell by heaving all over it. It's the only way to be sure. And this week, got something a bit topical for you. Ooh, have you now? you might have heard that in America, um, Pizza Hut has just launched an app which allows you to design and order your own pizza from the Kinect. What's that? I have heard that. Yes, if you are a massive shit. Um, Unlike ordering your pizza through the medium of interpretive dance. Well, as you as you're well aware, um, I do order pizza from a tablet from time to time. Uh, touch touch screen pizza. You keep it away. Carry on. This article is from USA Today, yeah. and I would like your reactions to this, just like a little bit at a time, because it's quite special. It's the ultimate multitask for any millennial. Order a pizza and play a video game, essentially at the same time. It burns. Um, because given that this is on Xbox, by essentially they mean not at all, not in the slightest bit at the same time. Vaguely, because the Xbox can't do that. Vaguely at the same time. On Tuesday, Pizza Hut and Xbox Live maker Microsoft, yeah, we know who Microsoft are, thank you very much, will announce plans to introduce a game-changing app. Oh, it bangs! It allows you to order anything on the Pizza Hut menu, right from your gaming console. Ah! Um, what? <laughs> What's a gaming console? You're on this console. But we do not grant you the rank of master. I'm the thinking it, that, that the... they meet on a on the top of a glacier in Scandinavia, while two men stand on either side of them and play awesome thrash guitar solos. And if you're if you're pulled up for any of the gaming sins, like spawn camping or kill stealing, then you're summoned to appear before the gaming council. And a t- and uh, answer for your sins. Just pause the game and order. No, you can't do that. For Pizza Hut, it's all about reaching out to its hard to reach target. Hard young to reach. Men, yeah, young men, eighteen to twenty-four. Ah! Forgive me if I'm wrong. People sitting in front of an Xbox 
between the ages of 18 to 24, are they not the easiest people in the world to sell pizza to? To sell pizza to. <laughs> it's Jamie Oliver. He's poisoned their minds. It's all healthy rocket salads now. Uh, do they exclusively target um, uh, single player gamers because they're feeling cannelloni? <laughs> It's possible. This is what John Engales, Chief Technology Officer at Rackspace, a cloud technology provider, says. <laughs> the very last thing a kid wants to do is look for a phone to order a pizza. Because that's only been the traditional method of ordering for the last 40 years. Every single teenager I know has a phone in their pockets. It's normally in the fucking... Think... It's, it's not in their pocket, it's in their fucking hand. I can't remember who made right this now. comment this week. The last thing they want to do is drop out of a multiplayer game or lose their progress if they're in single player, navigate through the fuck cluster that is Microsoft's tile system, find the fucking Connect app, and then order it by pretending to be a table. If I was playing that app, I'd be so depressed, I'd top... Myself. Oh, that's nice. I've got one more delicious, delicious soundbite with a stuffed crust for you. This is from Bert K at Pizza Hut. It's, he says, Today's family gather around their gaming consoles as much as they gather around the dinner table. I'm going to take five steps back from the microphone before I deliver my response. Are you ready for this? Let me get, can we get myself comfortable. I need to yeah. uh, set up... I need to just, get, just pull the laser firing button into the room. Okay. <sighs> okay, okay. Oh, good. I think I'm taking, good. Taking my headphones off now and stepping back. Bollocks! Bollocks! Fucking bollocks! Who the fuck is this? Bollocks! Who is paying these fucking... Bollock bring bollocks! Six figures to talk this bollocks! Hey, Dalek, maybe Pizza Hut need the dough? No. If Pizza Hut started serving calzoni, <laughs> they'd fold. No. I've run out of pizza puns. I say we nuke the entire site for Morbid. It's the only way to be sure. Hello again. Did you guess the remix retro tunes I played earlier in the show? Well, here are the answers. Final Fantasy Victory Fanfare. Golden Eye. Para for the Rapper. All in the mind. If you wanna test me, I'm sure you'll find the things I'll teach you. Be sure of each other. Nevertheless, you get a lesson from teacher. Now kick. Sonic Green Hill Zone. Speedball 2. Super Mario World. Tetris Karabashka Legend of Zelda Overworld Theme We love Katamari On two mega blood. Street 
Street Fighter 2 The World Warrior. And finally, I have no fucking clue what this track is. Do you? Sexy, sexy Batman time. Pringles keep it feel so good. Tequila and I'm in the bar. Bula China, iTunes, yeah. Na 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 If you've enjoyed the Lollacost, why not try these other fine holiday destinations? Visit the picturesque Monday Movie Show, which has basically the only movie reviews worth a fuck now that Eber's curl his feet up. Make a side journey to the quaint Gamescast to enjoy their fine wines, gaming chit-chat, and to meet Britain's only spherical human. On Friday, the circus comes to town, courtesy of the Mature Gamer podcast and its fascinating menagerie, including the coated man and the girl who can only communicate via sex noises. And for those of richer blood, no true connoisseur of burping and swearing at the internet can afford to miss What a Fool Believes, the web's second finest purveyors of aliens references and saying cunt a lot. <laughs> 